Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that the future of the Star Wars franchise seems to be quite expansive, not just with their books, novels, comics, and video games, but also let's not forget about the new Star Wars TV shows and new Star Wars films that are currently in the works as well by Disney and Lucasfilm. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, I am on Twitter at MikeZero1 if you guys want to go ahead and give me a follow on there. We do a couple of fun things on there from time to time if you guys want to go ahead and interact with that. So, actually, everything related to Star Wars right now, everything is looking up, to say the least. I mean, everything is looking positive and more positive as we get closer to both the Book of Boba Fett, the Kenobi series, Mando Season 3, the Bad Batch Season 2. I mean, a lot of things are coming our way, not just for next year, but also for 2023. The golden age of Star Wars is upon us, to say the least. A lot of great things are coming out by Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni. We all got to give those guys a lot of credit because they really are dedicating their lives and working around the clock, quite literally, in order to really make Star Wars as best as possible. So, with that being said, we do know that actress Daisy Ridley has been a little bit more talkative than usual when it comes to her experience about the sequel trilogy and exactly what she thought about the sequel trilogy movies, given that she's no longer involved heavily, of course, with Star Wars. She's been a little bit more revealing about how she felt about the overall direction by Kathleen Kennedy. We already, we already discussed that. However, what's really intriguing has everything to do with what Daisy Ridley is doing now with Star Wars and something that we talked about a couple of months ago that's falling directly in line with what Daisy Ridley unveiled about, of course, her involvement with Star Wars moving, af moving ahead, of course. So, with that being said, of course, you know, we all know that Star Wars is this ever-evolving thing. So, with that being said, with both Disney and Lucasfilm now focused on the new Star Wars movies and TV shows, they are also expanding their books and novels that will explore new Star Wars lore that will become a part of the canon content that will dive more into the universe. Currently, it's noted that actress Daisy Ridley recently took part in an interview where she unveiled something huge for the future of Star Wars involving the character Rey. Now, when Daisy was questioned if she would make a return to Star Wars as Rey, or if she has been approached for the Star Wars brand. Daisy Ridley went on to reveal that, well, I most certainly had my issues with how the sequel tr trilogy films were produced, since it had tons of problems by going back and forth with the changing the ending constantly. But I have been approached by the lovely Jon Favreau about returning into Star Wars for a project that is in early development. I'm still in the talks with him about me reprising the role of Rey, and that this is not going to be happening next year or the year after but in the near future for sure. So yes, we are discussing how we can fit Rey into the new universe that they are currently directing. Actually, you know what? I think I should stop talking now. I, re I actually shouldn't have said much of anything that will get the fans' hopes up. It's just that yes, we are in the talks with that consistently, I will say that much. What Daisy Ridley stated connects to the previous leaks of her coming back as a cameo as Rey Skywalker in a new show that takes place after Episode 9 in live-action form, where her cameo is said to be on the same level as Luke Skywalker in Mando Season 2. Now, additionally, separate from all of this, one major plan that Lucasfilm also has is to bring back Ben Solo, portrayed by actor Adam Driver. It's described that for the new series that is in current development, John Favreau recently had a long chat with Adam Driver recently about bringing him back into the Star Wars world and the franchise as a whole, as a force ghost of Ben Solo. Something that Adam really wanted to do, but of course Kathleen Kennedy refused to do so, in, of course, the Rise of Skywalker film. Now, John Favreau is said to still be very undecided on exactly how Ben Solo will come back in this new mystery project that is set to drop in 2024. It's further noted that Favreau even pitched an idea to the higher-ups over at Disney of using one of Lucas's original ideas of a Force ghost coming back to life temporarily, something that is going to be done for the Rise of Skywalker sequel series that will be in animated form as well. Now, that is also set to bring back Driver as well, doing voiceover work. 
Now, John Favreau and Dave Filoni so far had two meetings with Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley coming back for the new project that will be officially announced next year at Star Wars Celebration of 2022, currently dubbed simply as Star Wars Blue Point. Now, the Blue Point project is best described to explore the new Jedi Order created by Rey with the help of the Force Ghosts of the past. Now, the show is set to mainly focus on new Jedi and that both Adam and Daisy are going to be involved with having big cameos in the series and that Adam Driver is already officially signed on for the role and that he will be making this major announcement at Star Wars Celebration, so keep your eyes open for all of that. Now, it really does make you wonder, what in the world does Blue Point really mean? Is there a true meaning to that nickname or that code name, I should say, of the series? We're quite not sure exactly what it means just yet. With every Star Wars TV show, they all have their nicknames or their code names, if you will. They even had a code name for the Star Wars movies as well. So, when we go ahead and dive further into this, I think that it's really nice to see that Jon Favreau is making sure to expand the Skywalkers at heart, really kind of dragging them into multiple different eras. Here you have the return of Ben Solo being done by Adam Driver once again for this post episode 9 series that is going to be officially unveiled at Star Wars Celebration. So this fits directly in line with how at Celebration they're going to be expanding their roadmap. Now, what in the world does that mean? Some of you guys may be out of the loop. The roadmap is essentially this visual timeline of Star Wars projects, when they will be releasing, what those projects entail, and which projects become released, you know, either before or after other projects. So we're going to be learning more about that, not only on Disney Plus Day, but they will be expanding that over at Star Wars Celebration. Now, what Daisy Ridley had to say was very intriguing to me, at least, because she basically confirmed that she will be coming back as Rey Skywalker in this mystery project, quote-unquote. But at the same exact time, she kind of e-braked right in the middle of that conversation. I mean, she just came to a halt and said, I shouldn't really say any more. I should just, you know, keep quiet. But all that I will say is that, yes, we are in multiple, you know, conversations about myself coming back as Rey for that project by Jon Favreau. Now, we went over how season four of The Mandalorian is going to be the last season and how it's really gonna be a season that's gonna set things up for new shows. So this makes a lot of sense of how Jon Favreau not only wants to end The Mandalorian eventually, but that he wants to explore brand new shows that are going to add in not just familiar faces, but also brand new characters that we have yet to have seen, such as the new Jedi Order, right? The new Jedi Order with the new Jedi that were created by Rey and the, the Force Ghosts of the past and more. That to me, I think is all the more exciting, the fact that we are going to be diving more into that era. And it could very well explain of how there is going to be a TV show that connects to the movie Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron has been heavily implied to take place after episode nine. So with that being said, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.